everybody, welcome back to Coral Gardens. Today we're going to be talking about UV sterilizers, or this UV sterilizer in this tank, and some of the issues I've had with UV sterilizers over the years, and eh, some of the issues I had putting the UV sterilizer into this system. On previous tanks, when I was setting them up, I decided I didn't need a UV sterilizer. Matter of fact, I've had three tanks over the years, long-term reef tanks, and on each one I set them up and said, eh, I don't really need a UV sterilizer or I'm not going to put one on this tank. Then, you know, a year or two into the hobby, into the tank, something comes up and I realize I need a UV sterilizer. So I add one afterwards, after the fact, after the tank's been built. And it's always such a pain in the butt to get things to fit after you've got everything built. And so each time I've done it, I've ended up with having cables and, and wires for the UV sterilizer and pumps and things that I hadn't planned on when I designed the tank originally and plumbing that doesn't look quite right because it's plumbed in afterwards and it's sort of a second thought and I've done that a couple times over the years <laughs> so you know a bit of a slow learner I guess so on this tank I decided okay we're going to have the UV sterilizer installed at the beginning of the tank. And I don't know, I guess I'm sort of picky. I sort of went through and I was looking at UV sterilizers and the size of them. And there's, you know, quite a few different brands on the market to choose from. And I previously had bought some Coralife UV sterilizers with mixed reviews. I've, I've had a couple of them. Uh, the turbo twists and I would call them more of a hobby sort of UV sterilizer not really they didn't really perform as I would have hoped I mean in my opinion they performed for the first eight weeks and then they sort of teetered off and stopped performing but so this time I decided to go with you know a, a better quality a higher standard UV sterilizer so so this time we decided to go with a lifeguard 54 watt UV sterilizer from the beginning. And here it is down here. And the 50, 750 is a pretty big tank. It's six foot long. It's got a decent sized cabinet. Um, you know, there's not a ton of room underneath with all the equipment that I've added, but I mean, it's decent, it's got a fair bit of room, but does it really have room for a big UV sterilizer without making things even worse than they already are? As you can see, I still have some wire management to finish up in here. But does it have room for UV sterilizer? So I, I felt no, it doesn't in here. And I thought, okay, well, I'll put the UV sterilizer beside in the side cabinet here, and here it is. We've got it plumbed in. Now a couple things, the UV sterilizer comes with a two inch outlet. I think it's because it's meant for like ponds and things like that. It's not really meant for an aquarium, although they're commonly used. So you need this reducer fitting here to reduce it down to one inch. And that is not cheap. <laughs> and also it's not easy to find it's not something that you could just walk into home depot or rona or something and find that fitting i guarantee you you will not find that so where you need to shop for that would be like more of a plumbing store so here i'm located in vancouver canada that would be like a share it or a splashes type of plumbing store more professional plumbing store and they do have them they had them in stock it's quite easy to get once you know where to go. So just another step, you know, UV sterilizer doesn't come with any fittings. It just comes with the, the, the pipe here, you know, with this twist off fitting. So it doesn't come with any adapters or anything. You would think they would have them knowing that they're selling so many to aquarium stores, but they don't and they leave it to us to figure out where to find it. And anyhow, found them, got them in, well, I brought this home and realized, oh, 
the light comes out here when you turn this off and it slides out this way. So I've got room to get it out. But how did I get room to get it out? Because it's too big for this cabinet. So I thought, oh God, it's too big for the cabinet to fit in that way. I don't want it sideways. So, because if it's sideways, it won't be able to get the light out easily. And I want things easy maintenance. So I've got this sticking out the back and it actually kind of worked out because then the plumbing comes up the back, runs across here. It's hard to see with these lights on and goes back into the tank. And it's fairly clean, it's behind the tank, you don't really see it. And it fits nicely having it like this. And I can just sort of have it tucked into here with all this calcium reactor equipment. And it fits in pretty nice. So what I like about this setup is that it does come out and I can just sort of twist this off, pull out the light, change it, clean it, put it back together. Easy maintenance means it will get done. This one has a counter on it. So this will count down the days before you need to change a light bulb. So it does give you a reminder to change the light bulb because after 365 days, the light bulb needs to be changed and I believe the quartz sleeve as well. So I'll show you how I've got it plumbed in here. So in the sump, I have a little Octo DC pump. This is where the water is picked up. It's pumped up this pipe here, right up here, through the stand, if I could just focus on that, through the stand and off into here, into the UV sterilizer, through the back, like I was showing you earlier, it comes through here. There we go, it comes up and then over back into the tank or into the sump, I should say. And it comes over here. It's coming out here, it comes over and I've got a flow sensor on it so I can dial it in exactly the right flow that I need. And this just dumps over here way on the other side of the sump. So basically I'm sort of skipping one chamber here and pumping it over there. But the return pump pumps way more water than this one does, so it, it doesn't matter. So that's how I got that wired in there, but I don't know. The reason the video says UV sterilizer hell is because every time I've had a UV sterilizer install job, it's always felt makeshift. The UV sterilizer feels like it doesn't fit the tank or the, the system's not really meant for a UV sterilizer. Or, Maybe it is, it's just me, but just really, it's never really been an easy thing for me to, to set up on the tank. And this being no exception, I had troubles getting a UV sterilizer. I'd ordered a different one before I ordered this one, it wasn't available. Then it was available and it was, I ordered the wrong kind. I actually ordered a UV sterilizer that had a wiper. And I should have known better but the wiper is not meant for salt water. And it's just, a, I believe they rust or something. There's just a problem with them. So the wipers are for fresh water. And uh, so I ordered the wrong one. And so there was a big delay and I had to order a different one. So ended up getting this one, which was a little bit bigger. And then I didn't fit the sump stand here, the, the cabinet and blah, blah, blah. So long story short, it's all in and together and it works and it's working good. And this system here is probably the best I've ever had on any of my tanks because it's easy maintenance, it's in there. I can easily change that light, which is really important because it needs to be done. And if it's not easy, you tend to put things off and not do it, but uh, this one's gonna be pretty easy to get that in and out. So at the end of the day, I'm pretty happy with this UV sterilizer install. It's fairly clean, it works. It's connected to a DC pump which is controllable here. Here's a control controller for that. And the nice thing about this is that you can turn the speed up and down so you can dial it in exactly to whatever thing that you're trying to manage with UV sterilizer, whether it's just water quality, if you've got an ick outbreak or something, or if you're just working on an algae bloom or, you know, whatever you got going on. 
or you can just turn it off and only use it when you need it or if you need it. For me, I tend to use these quite often, so they just really help with clarity in the tank. And they do prevent algae blooms and other issues in the future that you might run into. So it's nice to have this all up and running and working and, and now we're ready to go for, I guess, get this cycle over with. We've been cycling now for about two weeks and uh, yeah, things are going really well. They're going a little quicker than I expected. And we've got some fish over here in quarantine waiting to go in. So I believe they are February the 3rd. They can be released. And so far everything's going really well with them. They've shown no real reaction to the copper. So anyways, you guys, happy reefing. And we will see you again on the next video.